Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotions, and thank you so much for allowing me to share a few precious moments with you every day. It's a privilege to be a part of your life. Our passage today is one of the most famous stories from the New Testament. It's a story that each one of us in a time of failure draws great hope and great strength from. Because all of us will fail. All of us still mess up horribly in life. And we're so thankful to Christ that there's no condemnation in Him, that there's forgiveness in Christ. Have you figured out the story? Yes. It's the woman caught in the very act of adultery. The story is in our reading in John chapter 8. I want you to notice the contrast between religion and Jesus. In verse 3, it says, they brought this woman and made her stand before the group. A woman caught in the very act of adultery. Where's the guy? The first thing you need to know about religion is religion is an all boys club. Religion does not honor women. Religion does not value women. You can always tell a church that's religious because I don't care how fancy and modern and cool they look, they don't allow women in ministry. The New Testament did, but they don't. Here's a woman caught in the very act of adultery. Last check, it takes two people, but the woman is brought and the man is let go. Religion is an all boys club. Jesus loves everybody. Secondly, religion likes to use our sin to shame us. They deal with it publicly. This woman was brought in verse 3 and made to stand before the group. Amazing. They wanted to publicly shame this woman. So religion is an all boys club. Religion uses our sin to shame us and humiliate us. Thirdly, religion uses our sin to advance itself. They brought this woman and put her before Jesus and said, Moses said that a person caught in adultery should be stoned. What do you say? And the scripture said they said this to trap him. Now, they were using this poor woman's sin, forgive me, as a tool to advance themselves. Religion is exploitive of our sin. We don't find forgiveness of sin. We find exploitation of our sin. But the next thing about religion is it's full of hypocrisy. When they kept pushing Jesus and pushing Jesus, he finally stood up and looked at them and said, um, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. <laughs> and the older ones left first. Now, those of you that are getting a little older, and we won't say how old, but those of you that are getting a little older, you understand the longer you live, the more imperfect you understand yourself to be. And these men that were older began to realize, and so they slunk off first like puppy dogs with their tails between its legs. And now we are left with just Jesus. Religion, once their hypocrisy is exposed, their exploitation ends, their all boys club ends, their public humiliation ends. Once Jesus exposes hypocrisy, and that must have been pretty brutal on those guys, all we are left with is Jesus. Now here is a woman caught in the very act of adultery who has been so shamed, and all she is with is Jesus, the one person who did have the right to stone her, the one person who was without sin. And he looked at her and said, neither do I condemn you. What a beautiful, beautiful truth. The one person who has the right to condemn us refuses to condemn us. Now, unfortunately, some people stop here. But there's a last sentence to that verse in verse 11. Go and sin no more. Now, brothers and sisters, yes, it is true that grace and mercy washes away our sins. And I'm a grace person. I'm a mercy person. I, I love it. But let us also remember that, yes, Jesus does not condemn us because of grace and mercy, but also because of grace and mercy. He looks at us and says, go and sin no more. He doesn't save us in our sins. He saves us from our sins. He doesn't forgive us to let us continue in sin. He forgives us and says, go and sin no more. Now, brothers and sisters, if you've been through a big failure and you're happy for grace and mercy, remember, the sin must stop.